In Canada, rents are down and interest rates are up. If you're looking at getting into the investment market here in Calgary, Alberta, it is so important that you're watching all levels of government and all national reports because right now, Calgary is in a pretty hot market. But when you look at the national stats and the national economics of things, Canada is in a very interesting place. So my name is Adam Fife, your Calgary Realtor. If you are looking at investing into Calgary, it is very important to go ahead and have these conversations well in advance. Book a call, the Zoom link is in the description. I promise I'm pretty easy to talk to, but we need to go over a lot more things before you start to jump down the rabbit hole. So let's go in and check out what is happening on the national stage. We'll look at rents and then we're gonna look at charts like this and talk about some of the bond yields going on in the country and then going into the escrow specifics of Calgary investing. So this video is going to be quite long. Now I just encourage you to look at the chapters along the bottom, scroll through the timeline, jump to the areas that you are most interested in and give me some feedback. I'm always looking for feedback and I appreciate the people that actually stick it all the way through because I would imagine this video is going to be about 25 minutes, no cuts, straight shot, Let's get into it. So April 2024, uh, rentals.ca has a rent report. Really good report. Asking rents for all residential properties uh, in Canada uh, averaged $2,181 in March, raising 8.8% from a year ago. The annual rate of rent growth slowed somewhat from the 10.5 annual growth recorded in February as rents experienced a 0.6% month over month decrease in March. So we saw, I believe it was like $13 of an average decrease. Decrease nonetheless, but it is what it is. So while we allow this to scroll down here, you can see that Calgary actually lands on the 23rd most expensive city for the average rent in the entire country, looking at a average of around $1,700. Um, in this, so these reports are quite interesting because they're all gonna be various and a little bit different in their own way. So you can see that Calgary is $1,700 for a one bed. And then you can also look at this row here and it's $2,100 for a two bed. So let's just remember that every single uh, third party website is gonna have slightly different numbers. So we wanna make sure that we're encompassing all of these things and coming to an average of what we believe it to be. Uh, these are just asking rents. These are not the final rent prices. This is just what people are putting up on those websites asking for specific properties. So. With that being said, let's look at the average rents in Canada for all property types. You can see that this past month we saw a major or a minor decrease. You can see that we've kind of held steady roughly since around October of 2023. Yes, we've seen some increases going into the new year. Now we're starting to see maybe some correction and decreasing going into spring. Who knows where it's going to land? The Canadian rental market is, is pretty crazy. So when we start to break it down into um, prevent like provincial this is the apartment condo sector and you can see that Alberta is around seventeen hundred dollars as an average for those condo apartments you can see zero bed one bed two bed three bed up 18 percent from last year the only other province that is remotely close to what we are is Saskatchewan at 18 percent as well but when you look at their totals you can see that the total uh, average rent is around $1,300, right? You start to look at the, the Atlantic Canada, BC, um, Ontario, Quebec, they all have more, uh, they are more expensive than what we are in Alberta, but you are seeing some pretty crazy decreases in places like BC and Ontario, but also places like Quebec as well as Mon um, Manitoba are seeing increases. So very interesting when you start to break this down provincially because every province is going through something a little different than the next. So let's start to break this down into more municipalities. So this is another look. Um, I don't know how they've broken this up compared to the first one, but when you're looking at this chart here for a condo apartments, you can see that Calgary's ranked 16th, right? The total average rent for this chart is $2,076, okay? Up about 19% year over year. So again, we're starting to see a little bit of like differences here, and we wanna make sure that we're looking at those averages to figure out where Calgary's actually landing. Looking at charts is great, but realistically speaking, when you're actually investing into the market, you wanna look at places like RentFaster, Facebook, Kijiji, all these things to try to find out what local rents are going for in that area to help dictate what you might actually go and ask that um, specific unit for. So breaking it down a little bit more here, this is the quadrants. Now I don't know how exactly they have this broken up, but it's city center, northeast, northwest, southwest, and southeast. Calgary real estate actually has eight quadrants where we break it down into a little bit more than this. So again, this is just kind of an average a bit. You can see that this is unfurnished and then this is furnished. So if you are looking at renting out some properties and you wanna to start to look at some differences here and try to break it down, if you're looking at Northeast or Southwest, doesn't matter. These will kind of help you dictate a little bit about the um, uh, the differences in price. Now, this is from rentfaster.ca and you, this is a really great breakdown of uh, studios, one beds, two beds, three beds, and then four beds. Now, three beds and four beds, they could be a mixture of townhouses, semi-detached and um, full homes. So we don't exactly know there. So this is an average just based off of the, the 
those beds. You can see for the most part, quick glance, there's a lot of red arrows up indicating that rent for the most part is increasing in Calgary. There are a couple of property types that are seeing decreases, but they're very minimal for um, the pricing that has fell from the month prior. So when we dive into the specifics of rents for our charts a little bit later in this video, I'm going to reference this. This is going to be the exact numbers that I use. So again, we're only looking at the averages for the entire city. We're not gonna get the full picture unless you actually dive into it specifically for yourself. Now, quick overview here, total city, residential is up to $597,000, okay? So that's all property types morphed into one. We've seen a 10.9% increase year over year, which equates to $55,800 or from last month, $12,000, just in one month. You can see the detached 739, semi-detached 658, townhouse uh, 448 and apartments 337. You can see that the townhouse and the apartments are seeing the greatest increase in price point. We're seeing a 20% and a 17% or a 70,000 and a $44,000 increase in price. So it's very important that you're realizing these things as you're getting into the investment market. For those of you who have already been in the market for three, four, five, ten 10 years, you're doing really well because the rents have increased dramatically as well and they've helped really offset some of those um, kind of the increases in mortgage costs but not enough for the new investors that are coming onto the market and i'll explain that in a moment so this is a map again just trying to break it down a little bit more of calgary so this is total residential price for individual quadrants and you can see how there's eight separate quadrants in here which is different from that one chart that we looked at a little bit earlier so you can see that northwest 649 and then you go down to south which is southwest 558. so when you're starting to look at different properties in different areas of calgary you just want to know what roughly the price points are in those areas now you can take that other chart of the northwest southwest southeast you can start to get some differences and run your numbers there to see what the average uh, like percentage difference is between those but it is also important to realize how much you're going to pay for a product and then um, go ahead and hold that for a long period of time so this is for educational purposes only i need to make sure to throw this out there this video does not replace a consultation with a licensed professional i really enjoy making these videos my charts are evolving every single month this is very enjoyable to me and i love working with investors to try to find good investment properties now i will be the first one to tell you that i don't um, jump on every single investment. I think that the people that have worked with me in the past will realize that I'm very cautious in a sense of which properties I recommend to buy because I really want to make sure that you find a good investment property that you're going to have for the rest of your life or for a, a solid period of time and not have any hiccups. So it's really important that you make a good purchase right off the hop. You, you make the most amount of money on the buy side of things, not necessarily the sell. Sometimes the sell is forced upon based on personal circumstances or market fluctuations. So you really wanna make sure that you're making a good point off the buy. Now, I'm not a mortgage professional. Always consult with a mortgage professional before a realtor. You wanna know your numbers, you need to know your numbers, and you gotta know what you're being able to approve for. I'm not a property manager. Please interview and select a property manager before um, looking for a home to invest in if possible. It's really important that you find a good management company that's going to look at your property and help you during all of the hiccups that you might experience in time. You want, to, you want them to look at it as an asset and help you do walkthroughs every six months, just as an example. If you don't know your numbers and you don't have a pre-approval, please don't book a call with me. Yeah, you can reach out via email, text message, or even just a phone call if you want. But at the end of the day, it's really important if we're gonna book a Zoom call, I want to know your numbers. For those of you who do book Zoom calls with me, I usually try to wrap that call up on Zoom within 15 minutes because I really do encourage you to find your numbers before I even open up the bag to look at different properties with you. Now, every single situation situation is vastly different. Investing takes a lot of time, patience, and the ability to act fast. And I really want to stress the ability to act fast because that is so, so, so important in this market. For those of you who are from Ontario, which seems to be a big number of you, you're used to that. You're used to acting fast, but maybe you're used to acting fast in a city that you can actually go and look at these properties, right? For someone who may be um, investing from abroad, you have to have that confidence in making decisions quickly while looking at things virtually. So just throwing that out there. Now, there's a couple things I'm going to touch on this week, and it's kind of interesting. So this is from Richards Mortgage Group. Shout out to Joel and Chris Richards, really good mortgage professionals here in Calgary. Joel provides a realtor update every single week, and this week he has indicated that there is an uptick while some lenders have increased their rates and a few are holding, meaning that a lot of the rates that we're seeing are slowly increasing. And why is that? Because people think that rates are going to decrease. Well, let's start to talk about those bond yields. Now, again, I'm not a 
a financial advisor, I'm not a mortgage broker, so just keep that in mind. So if you look at the bond yields here, the two year bond yield is 4.2%, where the five year is 3.79 and the 10 year is 3.75. And you can see from January, 2024, they're actually increasing, which is not a good thing for those of you who are waiting for um, interest rates to decrease. We are looking at a lot of various things like the inflation in the USA and just a lot of different economic factors, which I'm not gonna get into. If we look at this chart here, going back to July, 2023, you can see from October to January, there was a pretty big decrease in the bond yields, which a lot of people were assuming was going to mean that there is going to be some sort of decrease in the uh, Bank of Canada's uh, overnight lending rate, but that has not happened yet. So one thing I do want to highlight that I find very fascinating and it's very interesting is that this is actually an inverse uh, time. This is an inverse market, meaning that the two year is less expensive than the five year, which is less expensive than the 10 year. So, or sorry, more expensive than the five year, more expensive than the 10 year. So when looking at stuff like that, it's very, very fascinating. So let's actually go to ChatGPT here for a second and see what it has to say because it will be able to explain what that is in a lot more detail. And then I'll comment on that. An inverted bond market often refers to an inverted yield curve occurs when the yields on short-term bonds are higher than yields on long-term bonds. Normally, long-term bonds have higher yields to compensate investors for higher risk associated with longer periods before maturity. However, while short-term yields exceed long-term yields, it's suggested that investors are worried about the near term economic outlook. And I could totally agree with that and understand that. There are a lot of investors out there that are just not overly confident in the Canadian market right now. An inverted, uh, an inversion in the bond market is, is significant because it often views as um, a predictor of economic recession. Investors may prefer long-term securities when they anticipate that the economy will weaken in the near future, which drives up prices for long-term bonds and thus lowers their yields relative to short-term bonds. So when we look at this chart here, you can see that the last time that we actually had a normal bond market was in June 2022. It's been inverted ever since. Um, in June 2022, the 10 year bond was 3.23, the five and the two year were 3.1, and then it's been inverted ever since. So for the last one and a half, two years, investors have not been overly confident in the Canadian market as a whole, indicating that I don't really think we're going to see interest rates decrease by the Bank of Canada too soon. So that is very, very interesting and very intense. And again, maybe it's something that I would touch on a little bit more if those of you who are interested in that. So if you like what I have here, maybe we can you know, talk on that a little bit more. Just comment below. But with that being said, the Bank of Canada held its rate the same. And this post here from BNN Bloomberg showcases a little bit about that neutral rate. So I think a, a pretty high topic right now was that how the Bank of Canada increased its neutral rate. And if you look at the highlight part here, the neutral rate is now estimated to be between 2.25 and 3.25%, up from 2% to 3% um, in the central bank's last report. Now, Going down a little bit here, raising the neutral rate indicates that the Bank of Canada thinks interest rates will land at a higher level once it's done cutting than previously projected. Um, though the neutral rate uh, doesn't tell us anything about the timing or pace of cut. So when you actually read through this here a little bit, it makes sense. The pre-pandemic levels, interest rates are at historic lows. We heard that from our prime minister. And when we started to increase interest rates, people thought, well, at some point or another, we're going to reduce down to maybe those pre-pandemic levels. This article here kind of indicates that that's probably not going to happen. A lot of people kind of speculate that maybe we're going to rest around, um, you know, a, um, like a 4% interest rate on a home when you're going for a five-year mortgage, because right now it's about five, 5.2. And I believe that I could see about, you know, one full percent decrease over the next couple of years, maybe a little bit more, but I don't really see much more than that. So the, indicator that they're increasing their neutral rate is again just another sign that they're probably not going to decrease rates too soon so maybe it's not the best play to completely wait it out but again talk to your mortgage broker talk to your financial advisor because i am not that so this is the bread and butter this is where we're going to dive into it in a little bit more detail so this chart here is the detached home with legal basement suites so every single chart is going to look the same but with different 
entity or like different um, uh, text. You can see that in this chart here, we're only looking at 450 to $650,000 homes in the entire city. When we look at the entire city, there was only 15 sales in the past 30 days, which was six more than the last month. The average price that I'm seeing for this type of product is around 605,000. There were a couple homes that sold for 499, 495, 515, but there were quite a bit of homes too that sold around that 615, 640 price point. So with a 20% down or 121,000, uh, with your mortgage of 484, um, a five-year term, 25-year amortization, and a 5.59% interest rate, these are some of the numbers that you're going to see. Now again, this 5.5% interest rate is going to change for your personal situation. Um, so just make sure that you're reaching out to your mortgage broker there. So rents based off of the rent faster chart for a three bed up, you're looking at around 2254 and a two bed down, you're looking at around 1646. I can tell you right now, there are communities in Calgary that basement suites are over $2,100. And at the same time, three bedroom ups are absolutely at $2,600 in certain communities, but those communities are gonna have a higher asking price. So again, just take this with a grain of salt. The whole point of this is to showcase to you what I do and how I actually go in and find investments for my investors. So when you add up those rents, you get a total of $3,900 a month. Then you have to consider your mortgage, which is here, which is around 2,900 bucks, your taxes, no condo fees, home insurance around 400 bucks, home utilities typically covered, city utilities kind of covered within that as well, but you just wanna make sure that you are um, considering these things. So the gross annual income for something like this is 46,800. The gross debt servicing or your mortgage is around 36,000. The operating costs, right, are around 7,800. So when you kind of put those numbers together, you can see that there's actually a monthly cash flow on this example for 250 bucks with a gross yield of 6.44, which is in the red. I love to see that 7% gross yield and it's not always possible in this market. So when you're looking at this, not bad, but let's actually put in some of those contingencies. So this is new. This is actually uh, the lower portion here is a little bit new and we'll touch on that in a second here. So when you look at this, this is exactly what I run for my investors. So you got an annual income of 46,000 here. You have a monthly income of around 3,900 3, here. If you are getting a property manager, it's about 10%. So you got 10%, which is 390 or $4,600. Repairs and improvements, you should always be saving for repairs and improvements, furnace, windows, roof. Um, when you look at your vacancy rates, right now the vacancy rate's quite low, hence why I'm putting 3%, but some people wanna put 5% there, right? Some people wanna put 10% vacancy. You really wanna make sure that you're saving some cash for the future. Then you go down to your operating expenses, like your property taxes, your home insurance, uh, if your condo fees, if you have a condo, your utilities, your cleaning, other stuff like this, your monthly mortgage payments, which are we've already talked about in the last one. So this is interesting. I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. So c gross cash flow with no contingencies and no property manager. If you were to not c care about any of those things, you could still potentially pull in $250 a month, which is awesome. Meaning that yes, you still have some money that you could put aside in savings, but it's not enough um, in my personal opinion. If you're going to look at cash flow with contingencies, but without a property manager, there's a potential loss of $63 per month. If you look at it with a no contingencies with the property manager, so 10% of your total income, then you're looking at about $141 loss per month. Now, the net cash flow with uh, contingencies and the property manager, which is the safest option, is a negative $450. So you're actually, you're not out $450 because you can see if you weren't to do a property manager or contingencies are still an option to make money. But at the same time, the safest of investments are going to be those ones that cash flow and you can actually put a comfortable amount of money aside every single month. So on average, these really don't work out that well right now. If the, in, if the rents decide to continue to increase, but the property prices stay the same, these could offset themselves by a bit. So let's look at what's going on if you were to put down 30%. Now in this video, um, we're gonna have two charts for the same thing, one for 20% down and one for 30% down. So this chart here has 20% down for $121,000 and this one has 30% down for $181,000 down uh, mortgage, down payment. So you can see all of the numbers are the same besides the monthly cash flow and the mortgage has obviously dropped per month. We went from about 29, almost $3,000 to $2,600, sorry, not thousand that has indicated a monthly cash flow of $623 per month. So when we look at this, look at all the green, okay? You're now having more flexibility because you have a higher down payment and the, with high interest rates, this will obviously help you quite a bit. So you can see that no contingencies, no property manager, $624 
per month, no with contingencies, no property manager, 312, and with no contingencies, but with hiring a property manager, yeah, you can have $234. But if you wanted to look at this from the safest lens, there's a there's still a loss of $78, which is still very realistic because maybe you just don't put as much into repairs and improvements because you bought a house that doesn't need the repairs and improvements that you want. So let's go on to the semi-detached with legal basis suites. This is my bread and butter. I love this. If I could buy a million of them in Calgary, I would. So we're looking at 450 to 650 in the entire city. You can only see that there's nine sales in the last 30 days, which was two more than last month. Now let's remember that nine sales sales in the past 30 days is very, very few sales. Pretty obvious. So you can see that the average price was 560 with 20% down. It is 212 or uh, sorry, uh, 112. You can see that the mortgage is around 448. Everything else is the same amortization, amortization, three bed up, two bed down. I just use the same numbers as detached. You can see the income, you can see the mortgage, the taxes, yada, yada, yada. You've got a $548 um, per month cash flow with a 7.12% gross yield, which is very important to note. This, if you could find this 560 with 112, thousand dollars this is a pretty darn good investment and i would absolutely advise you look into it a little bit deeper and maybe even make an offer so when we start to dive down into the uh, protections of that everything else you can see right at the bottom net cash flow with contingencies and property management there's actually a loss of 153 dollars so it's not the perfect investment so you might not be able to put as much as you wanted into those repairs and maintenance columns that we wanted or the rental vacancies. But regardless, you can see that there are some opportunities to actually go and make some money on something like this. Now, let's look at if we put 30% down. 30% down is 168,000 up from the 112 that we had before. You can see that monthly cash flow is about 900 bucks, right? That's huge. It's still at 12 point or sorry, 7.12% gross yield. So when we look at this chart here, everything's in the green, right? You have a lot of money coming in. You have a abundance, you have over and it is $193 with the contingencies and hiring a property manager. If you didn't hire a property manager and you still wanted those contingencies, there's an opportunity of making $583 on average. Now, you know, good luck in a way trying to find a really good single or sorry, semi-detached home with a legal basis suite for 560. There was nine in the last um, 30 days. So there are out there, but like, it's gonna be super competitive and you really gotta make sure that you go in there with a very strong offer. So with that being said, let's look at the townhouses. Kind of busted through this pretty quick here because we're already over 20 minutes. Townhouses with garage, 350, 500, at least two beds throughout the entire city. There was 148 sales, okay? Lots of sales in this market. Average price that I saw was about 454. Quite a bit in like the high threes, quite a bit in the high fours, right? So down payment, 20%, 90,000. Now, when you look at the three bed townhouse rent, you get about $2,700. So when you start to include your condo fees and all that stuff right off the hop, you're losing $88 per month as average as the entire city. So when we start to break this down here, you can see everything's in the red. Um, best case scenario, you are losing $88 per month with no contingencies, no property manager, right? So it's really not the best investment to ra make right now. But let's remember that this is an average for the city. Doesn't mean that there's still gonna be really good townhouse investments out there. You just gotta look for them a little bit more. So let's say we put 30% down, right? Goes from uh, 90,000 to 136,000. Now you got a potential of making $192 if your condo fees were only 274 property taxes mortgage stuff like that um i do want to point out gross yield is only 5.7 percent as well um for this product type it's pretty low so when we start to look down here the only thing that really could make sense is if you weren't if you didn't really care about the contingencies and you didn't really care about the property manager there is 193 dollars in um, potential to uh, cash flow per month but again you just want to make sure that you're watching and preparing yourself for those investments you got to act on them pretty quickly and you want to run your numbers you want to make sure that it makes sense so let's look at the apartments okay so the apartments in the city center there's so many in the city i'm only looking at city center 550,000 to 350,000 at least two beds at least 700 square foot okay anything under 700 square foot is a two bed it's a pretty small apartment i like a 5900 so i think that's a pretty good place to be average price 281 20% down, 56,000. Um, you look at the two bed downtown condo, about $2,200 is kind of average there. So you've got your mortgage, your uh, property taxes, your condo fees are 560 bucks. So if you look at that, you're thinking, okay, there's still a cash flow of 97 bucks, not that great. So when we start to you know, break it down a little bit more here, you can see that contingencies, no property manager, there's still a loss of $80. 
best case or the, the most protected situation is a loss at 302. So there is possibility here as well. But again, you just want to make sure that you are being protected and smart. So let's look at 30% down. So it goes from uh, 56,000 to $84,000. So you've got a, uh, everything else is the same. It goes up to $271 per month for cash flow, right? Now you can see there's quite a bit more green here, but you're, you're kind of taking a little bit more of a risk, not having, you know, putting money aside for your repair and maintenance. Maybe you're not putting aside for rental vacancies. You don't have a property manager, whatever, right? Best care, or most protected scenario, $128 loss per month, but everything else, there's still some cash flow there. So I just banged through that super quickly because I wanted to showcase to you the differences that are available to you as an investor in Calgary. When I meet investors, I go over this spreadsheet and I copy and create a spreadsheet for you to run your own numbers. So it's really, really important to realize that these videos are averages and they're just trying to showcase to you what the average is happening in the city. But at the same time, every single investment property is very different. You gotta look at the community, you gotta look at the amenities, you gotta look at um, you know schools, traffic, you gotta look at the C train and, and all this other stuff, public transit. So um, if you have any questions, please hes don't hesitate to ask me. Comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. I have not touched on Airbnb in a while. It is so hard to run averages on Airbnb. I almost don't think it's worth it. I will and have been able to help people look at Airbnb properties. We go through your key property management company. We will get you some projections and we will specifically look at that home for your own needs because you take on all the utilities, you take on all the bills. So the, the incomes look a lot better, but you need to make sure that you're putting in all of the extra costs as well as buying all the furniture up front. So it is a little bit more of a riskier investment. It takes a little bit more. There's a lot more on your credit card every single month, but the payouts are pretty strong. So if you have any questions for long-term investments, short-term investments, please do not hesitate to reach out. If you know your numbers and you're ready to make that investment, go ahead, book a call. It's the link in the description. It goes directly to my calendar. My name's Adam Fife. Thank you very much. I look forward to all your questions in the comments. We'll see you next month. Peace.